Hey there guys, what is going on? Today we're doing something a little bit different. We have some generic gameplay in the background, nothing super specific. If you want to pay attention to that, feel free. But if you just want to listen to the sound of my voice, listing off all the reasons why I thought Modern Warfare was absolutely fantastic, one of the best games that they've ever made, well, just continue listening. If you don't want to hear that and you want to hear me rant about the top 10 worst things about Modern Warfare, we'll have a video on that very, very soon. Hopefully that will be up the day after that one does go out. So do stick around if you want to see that. If you are interested in these videos moving into Cold War, I would massively appreciate you hitting that subscribe button with those notifications turned on. We are making a late push this year towards 4,000 subscribers, and I would very much appreciate it. That would be my ultimate Christmas present. I would massively appreciate it from you guys if we could get there. And let's just jump straight into our list here. In the number 10 slot, I'm actually going to say something a little bit controversial here. I'm going to go with the maps. Now, a lot of people probably won't like the map design in of duty and we'll of course talk more about that in the things that we don't actually like but with the maps every single map feels distinct it feels unique it feels like we've got a different location around the world some of the maps do feel fairly similar though but at least you know exactly where you are you know what's going on and there's an excellent variety of sort of larger maps that play very well in like 10v10 game modes and stuff like that as well as close quarters game maps some of the best close quarter stuff we've seen in call of duty so far like you're looking at shoot house and stuff like that you're like Man, that is such a fantastic map. Like, when the Shoothouse 24-7 playlist does come up, everybody's on it all the time. We've seen the return of absolutely fantastic maps from previous Call of Duty games. We've seen Vacant, Hard Hat, Scrapyard, stuff like these maps, Broadcast. You've seen stuff that has been previously well-received, praised maps, and they've taken them, Rust included, Shipman and stuff like that. They've taken and put them into these games, and it basically feels as good as it did previously, of course. We will be talking about the doors and everything that is wrong about the Call of Duty in tomorrow's video. But I mean, a lot of the map design feels good. You got a nice variety of sort of open style areas, a lot of three lane stuff. I would actually say that a lot of the maps feel very, very good in this game. There are, of course, some stinkers. Like you look at Anaya Palace originally that was designed for 6v6 and you're like, that map is so large. But as the game has gone on, and we'll talk about this more in a second, as the game's gone on, they've made changes, they've edited some stuff, they've made more maps, more suitable for different areas, and it feels like there's a good variety every time you jump into like a quick play playlist, you're always getting something different. And of course, there is something for everybody with the maps. Like if you like sniping, you like longer range distances and stuff like that, you've got Euphrates Bridge. Most people will say Euphrates Bridge is one of the worst maps they've ever designed, but if you like sniping, you like Euphrates Bridge, it's as simple as that. Piccadilly did start as one of the worst maps in the game and the actual map design itself is not great like I really don't like the actual shape of it but the vibes right I really like that aesthetic when I first jumped in I was like man this map's really cool and then the spawns are bad and stuff like that but they've all rectified that like issues that I've had with this game and the maps and the map design and stuff like that they seem to have as the game gone on they've rectified a lot of the issues here. And I really do like how they've iterated the old maps to fit into the new game system. The number nine slot, again, this is going to be a little bit controversial here, but I want to say the developers here. Like, we will have seen the most active development cycle in any Call of Duty. Like, we've seen probably the most nerfs, the most buffs. Everything that we have seen from the developers this year might not have been good, but at least they've been active. Like, there are constantly things changing in this game they're changing bug fixes they want warzone to be successful in the long run so the engine has to be suitable they've got to get rid of all these bugs constantly propping up and stuff like that so the actual developers have done a fantastic job this year again i know this is going to be controversial because there are bad things about this game but again we'll get into that in tomorrow's video but i really do like the constant effort that the developers even if they've not done a good job they've tried their best to sort of make the best call of duty experience that we could have today like I'm thinking about all the weapon balancing that we've seen this year. Multiple weapons have been nerfed and buffed three to four times, five times. Some weapons have received five, six balance changes throughout the year. They're trying to make things right. Of course, you would probably expect them to be a little bit better at it by now, like tuning all these knobs and stuff like that. Surely it couldn't be that difficult, but at least they're doing it. We've seen Call of Duty's past that have had the most broken things in them. We've got like constantly broken weapons, things that are way too strong. And at least there is an active effort to try and get things back into balance. Of course, you could say that they could nerf the M4 more, they could nerf the MP5 more, but it is what it is. The game is what it is. They've been constantly re-tweaking things and making stats different and stuff like that. And it does actually help keep the game fresh, interesting, and giving pretty much giving everyone new stuff to play this. Like, if you do check the patch notes one day and you see that your favorite weapon's been changed, you want to sort of adjust your class setup, you want to find out what's good, what's bad, what works for it now, it always gives people reasons to come back to the game. They see a new patches out, they check the patch notes, and they're like, oh man, 
my favorite weapon actually got buffed and they come back to the game and there's a lot of constant developer attention for this game it does feel like they don't really know what's going on sometimes with their additions but again We'll talk about that in another bit, but I feel like the developers have done a really good job this year of being constant and active and sort of taking an active role in shaping this particular game here. So that's my number nine slot, the developer activity here. Number eight, we're gonna go with the graphics. I mean, I wouldn't say this is the best looking Call of Duty game. Some of the maps look a little bit washed out and the colors aren't fantastic on certain areas, but for the most part, the game looks good. It's up to like what the game actually looks like, the actual graphics, and depending on what like, platform you're playing on, you can get a different experience with this, but the game looks great. Like Most of the surfaces look fine. The textures are always good. The shaders are constantly changing and updating all the time. That's kind of annoying, but I mean, it is what it is. You want the game to run as good as it can. The game looks great. Like There's a lot of attention to detail here, all the weapon models and stuff like that. And again, we'll move forward as to what we like about this game in just a second. But I mean, the graphics look good. It's hard to argue this is a very good looking Call of Duty game. I've seen Call of Duty games and I've taken a look at previous ones and they have looked super shitty. Like I'm thinking about Ghosts here. I'm thinking about like Advanced Warfare, like these older games that you think like they look pretty good back in the day. And then you go back and play them and you're like, man, this looks super trash. This was washed out. The colors are bad. Like everything's gray, everything's brown. Like there is a good variety here. The graphics all look good. There's lots of color. There's different stuff floating around. There's different variety of map types as we already spoke about and everything looks like it's absolutely a war zone and that's exactly what you're after here you want the maps to look like their battlefields you want to look like they're lived in they're played in they're run around in. there's destruction everywhere like they've done a good job in my opinion making everything look appropriate everything feel good the map models look amazing like the actual gun models look fantastic there's a lot of work in the character design you look at this man just here on the screen right now you see his bags and all everything it looks good this is a very good looking Call of Duty game, and I'm not sure Cold War is going to live up to the same sort of expectation that we're expecting here in the game looking fantastic, but I'm sure it's going to look fine. There's some maps that we've seen that already look fantastic, and I really do like the graphics in this year's Call of Duty. So in this slot here, we're going with the graphics in this year's Call of Duty. I'll say it here again, and I feel like this deserves its own spot on this list as it is a constant presence in this game, and whenever it is not there, people are always asking for it to come back, and that is, of course, Shoot House. Now, I know we did talk about the maps and stuff like that already, but Shoot House is just such a popular map. Like, many people would probably say that it's the only good map in this game, but I don't actually believe that's true. I think, as we mentioned earlier, that a lot of the maps in this game do function very, very nicely, and they play quite well. But Shoot House is just like an S-tier map as S-tier maps get. The top tier of Call of Duty maps. This is probably going to go down as one of those maps that is like your nuke towns and stuff like that. The real fan favorites that you will see again and again in Call of Duty games in the future, just because it just plays really, really nicely. Most of the time, just three lanes, very, very small. You go up into the thing, you go up into the office building, you shoot people down, you run around, you have a great time. The fast paced action of shoot house is of course what we love about it. And everything's close quarters and this is how the game should feel most of the time. And now you're probably saying that I might be overreacting a little bit here. Again, this might be controversial for some of you because the only reason you consider Shoot House to be the best map is because all the other maps are bad. And I don't actually believe that's true. I think all the other maps are distinct and they have their own place in this game. And I think they all play quite well. But I feel like Shoot House single-handedly brought a lot of people back into this game and has carried the maps this year. But of course, as I mentioned, I do actually like a lot of the map design in this game. But Shoot House really does take the cake for me. And it's a perfect addition to this list here. In the next slot here, we're actually going to go with the removal of like season pass content. You remember how you had to pay like 60 bucks or 80 bucks, depending on where you live, to get like eight maps throughout the year? How did they ever get away with that? Like basically charging for an entire new game for them to include like eight to 10 maps. They release it like quarterly. So in the first quarter, you get like two or three maps, and that was like 15 20 bucks like having free dlc this year has made such a difference to the game every couple of months every two or three months you're like man there's going to be a couple of new maps there's gonna be a couple of new guns in the game and it's just like well why didn't they do that before of course it's about money and stuff like that but with the battle pass and like systems like this the dlc's being free means we can just enjoy the content that we receive like we get new content very very often and they're constantly up to date they're constantly changing new maps and everything just feels fantastic so having removed the actual like pay aspect of that, it also separates the actual like content. If you don't have the map packs, you don't get to play with the rest of the player base like previously. Like there's an option still in Modern Warfare 3 to turn off the DLCs in case you just want to play with people who don't have them because if you don't have them, well, you can't play with people who have them. So 
it's one of those things where if everybody has all the content, you bring your player base together, more people can play together, more people just can play the game in general, makes it more accessible and stuff like that. And it feels really, really good to have all the content basically have been free for this year's Call of Duty. I really do appreciate that. And it makes its spot on this list as well. In our next slot, oh, I want to say our customization. In customization in this year's Call of Duty, we have so many different options, it's unbelievable. We can change the way our character looks, we can change their individual skins, we can change basically pretty much everything about them as long as it is unlocked for you. You can basically make your character look how you want it. So do you want to pick a specific person you want to play as like, you want to play as Ghost for example. You've got like six or seven different skins that you can go with with Ghost and they all look different, they all look unique, they're very very cool in my opinion. Then you look at your weapon camos and they've added multiple different mastery camos and you're like, well, that's just something to grind towards. That's just extra content so people keep playing the game. Well, you're right. But the ability to customize pretty much everything that you can include, you just it just means the game is fresh. You see people running around looking goofy and you're like, man, I actually want to look like that. How do I do that? And then you look and you're like, well, hey, maybe they spent a bit of money on that particular outfit and you're like, well, maybe I don't want to do that. But it's one of those options that you always have. You're looking at customizing your characters, you're customizing your weapons and stuff like that. There's a lot of different customization options. Like, you see that we're floating around behind us. Well, look, we got a bat. Like, our pet is a bat. And that's like, why do we have that? Well, it's cool. I just really like running around with, like, a bat. It's a very, very interesting here, of course. You can then change, like, your logos, your profile, and everything, as you have always been able to do. And there's just a load of different customization options. And then you got weapon blueprints, and you want to make something look specifically cool. Well, if you have that blueprint unlocked, it changes a lot about the weapon. It might get, like different sort of flares and stuff like that the bullets actually look different with different traces you make the skin look neat and then they combine with like the actual camos that you can put in the weapons everything about the customization options in this game are just fantastic like there's a load of different things that you can customize and it really feels like this is probably the most expressive you can be in call of duty so something a little bit different here on a list we want the best weapon in the game or at least my favorite weapon and then of course has to fall to the M4. I mean, something like this particular class setup that you can see in the background here is always gonna do a fantastic job for you. But it's one of those things where the M4 is my favorite weapon about this game. Like it's just consistently one of the best weapons and they've nerfed it three or four times as we spoke about in the constant changes part of this particular video. But I mean, it's one of those weapons where you're always gonna do well with it and it's a fantastic option. You can get loads of different varieties of it. Like you can get different weapon variants and stuff like that with different iron sights. You can get ones that look like M16s, M4s from previous games. And it's just a constantly powerful weapon in this game, of course. This is one of my favorite weapons because it is so super powerful. Like if we're looking at a class setup, you want your M16 Grenadier, your Tac Laser, Commander, four group, 50 round mags, and of course the stipple group tape. But of course it is a very versatile weapon. You can pretty much do whatever you like, but of course the M4 is my favorite weapon in this year's Call of Duty. Now, my third favorite thing about this year's Call of Duty is going to be a little bit controversial. Many of you would have had this at number one because it is really obvious to put this at the number one slot. But it is, of course, Warzone. Now, I put this at number three because I don't play an awful lot of Warzone, but it is very hard to doubt that the Warzone addition to the game has been one of the best things this year. Basically, when they've added Warzone, they've brought in a whole bunch of new people like so many people are playing Call of Duty again, and it just feels absolutely fantastic. It might not be the game that I'm super interested in, but of course, Warzone is a fantastic thing that they've added into this game. It is very difficult to say that Warzone is a bad thing. You might not personally like Warzone, as I don't really think it's super fun, but it, I can recognize the impact that it has had at bringing new people into Call of Duty, making a free version of Call of Duty that anyone can play, even with your free weekends and stuff like that. You can get into the actual multiplayer action, it just lets pretty much everyone play a version of Call of Duty that they do prefer. Warzone has been a fantastic addition to this game, of course. It's free, like Battle Royale, Call of Duty, very, very similar options that you would have in regular multiplayer. Plus, it's free. It's very hard to argue with just free content. Free game to play, it is a huge, huge game. Now, my number two most favorite thing in this game is the actual engine itself. They have done so much work with this engine. Like, I know it feels like it can be a little bit like Call of Duty on ice when everybody is sliding around, slide cancelling, slide hopping and stuff like that. But the fact that the engine actually allows you to slide around everywhere, play a little bit more tactical, be sliding, movement, constantly keeping your momentum up. And then you think about something like inspecting your weapons that we've not ever really seen in a Call of Duty game before. The fact that you can have a look at what your weapon model looks like is perfect for me because I like to make thumbnails using that style of holding up the weapon, seeing what it looks like. But the weapon detail, everything about the engine in this year's Call of Duty is absolutely fantastic. Like, 
There's just so many good things to mention that I can't really list them all off here, but inspecting the weapons is one of my favorite things. The fact that you can emote and stuff like that, you can do little dances, you can do little sprays, everything that you've ever been able to do in a Call of Duty game has all culminated into this specific engine here, and it feels really nice, it looks nice, that's where you get your graphics and stuff like that from. The engine just feels fantastic, it's smooth, there's not really much I can say that is wrong with it. Of course, there's going to be bugs and stuff like that, but... The fact that this particular engine is so good, so strong, is the reason they're not actually changing Warzone over to the different engine when Cold War does drop. The fact that this engine is so good and they believe in it so much, the fact that Warzone isn't changing over to the next, next Call of Duty engine, just is a testament to how strong this particular option is. Now, of course, we could not leave off the list, and this is my number one favorite thing about this year's Call of Duty, the gunsmith. And I am so happy that the gunsmith is moving forward into Call of Duty in the future because it is such a good thing. Being able to choose a massive variety of different attachment options that do so many different things, so many different statistics. Like you have so much option here with your five slots. You can do pretty much whatever you like. I mean, you want different barrels. We dropped the barrel. We got heaps of different muzzle options. I mean, most of them don't get used because there is always going to be ones that are better than others. But you just look at all the different options that you have here, different sites, so many different sites, different stocks that you can change. And it essentially makes you hold different weapons and it allows weapon varieties and variants and stuff to come up. And you can have so many different options. This of course falls into the customization category as well with a lot of different customization options. Then you look at the weapon variants, as I mentioned already, and you can customize each individual attachment to be a different variety of weapon. And it feels so, so fantastic. There's not really much wrong with the gunsmith and it is my favorite feature about this year's Call of Duty. Modern Warfare would be completely different without the gunsmith so I'm so glad that they've managed to keep that in and the variety of attachment options that actually change the way your weapon looks will be moving in forward into the next Call of Duty and I really really appreciate that. Anyway guys thank you very much for watching this one. I do appreciate it of course. If you have not already done so I don't know about 80% of you have not already done this for me so I'm calling you out here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button with those notifications turned on. As I mentioned a number of times, we are moving in towards the new Call of Duty here. So Cold War content will be coming out as soon as I can physically do it. Don't forget, the content will always be coming in Cold War. We're going to keep going all year and we will see you there. So thank you very much for watching this one. As I said already, we're going to have the top 10 things that I hated about Modern Warfare tomorrow. And I will see you in that one. Bye.